Hello everybody, today I want to show you a really cool trick to make interesting squelches. Now I've been working on this nighttime track for quite a long time and really I need a few extra sequences of course. As you can see there's a lot of stuff that I still need to fill in but I'm mainly starting off with all of my sequences. And one of the cool things that I want to try over here is to do a little bit of like a 16 note squelch sequence. And just thinking of doing that I came up with an idea which could be really really interesting. And that is to use very low frequency oscillators to do the actual modulation of your squelch. So normally what you would do is you would have some kind of random setup in here and you can do that through external modulations. You can do that through stuff like the note on random, for example, right? Modulation source, note on random, and then just picking any of these three here. But another way that you could do that is by using a different oscillator. And let's set this to a sine wave so that we can see what is happening. And let's just assign this to the course pitch, set it all the way up. At this rate, it's just going to be like an actual modulation. But listen to what happens if we turn the octaves down. You can start to hear the individual modulations of the sine wave going up and down. And we can turn it down even further. And now we're at the point where with it being so low, what happens if we press individual notes is that with the phase randomization, it is just going to start in different positions of this modulation that we set up. So let's limit this a little bit so that we get the exact right tone that we want. So you can hear that we already kind of get both the pitch randomization of this as well as the gliding modulation that we want from these squelches. And then all we have to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to copy this over to a different oscillator so that we can use that as our modulation for the bandpass. So this is going to be the same thing. We use that to modulate and we're not actually listening to it. So now all we have to do for this patch to really make sense is to just add an arpeggiator and then add a little bit of delay. And you get these cool like bubbly bouncy squelches out of that. Now a little bit of extra things that I want to do here is just to spice it up at a LFO here. And this is going to be another random modulation. But this one I need it outside of Serum itself because we're just going to set this to a 16 note random and we're going to map that to the gate. I want it to be not entirely at the low and I want it to get roughly up until say 47 here. So that it sits between the very low part, which we can set like this. So the lowest modulation that we get is like 25%. We can go a little bit lower if we want to like 13 there. And then the highest is going to be 95. And this is just going to be the length of the note. Let's actually put this in a context so that we can hear how it sounds in the context as well. One of the things that I notice is that because we have this really kind of wide top here, we get a lot of the same kind of high pitches, I would say, or, or very close sounding high pitches. We can kind of get rid of that by just using a triangle on this guy. And I guess you can do a triangle on both. In this case, that means that every individual value has the same kind of chance of being played now, as opposed to what it was with the side wave where the highest and lowest values have a slightly higher chance of being played. Right, just because of the bulging property here. Now, a cool thing about this setup is the way that it interacts with Unison. So let's have a play and just turn up the voices to two every once in a while so that you can hear the differences that that makes for the modulation.
the reason why I was just going up to two for most of it and just turning it up for the last bit was to show you that it doesn't actually do anything above two. For the modulation, it just uses two of the voices for the actual modulation. But you can definitely hear that it has some interesting application on the tone. I was hoping that with a unison of two, we would have a different modulation for the left and the right channel. That's not the case. We're still getting a mono sound. If we do want a stereo sound, of course, we set the unison over here to two and just add a little bit of detune to get that wider sound out of it. There's some more interesting things that we can do in terms of like effects if we want to. For example, we could add a nice phaser with a nice amount of pulse or even modulate the amount of pulse that are playing. Let's just go with note on random one here and then note on random. I say note on random one, but note on random discrete. I've been using Serum for 10 years, so I'm way too familiar with just note on random one here. And what I'm going to do is set up a modulation curve that looks like this so that there's a high likelihood that it's not going to actually play the phaser and there's a little bit of a likelihood that the phaser is going to get mixed in at whatever percentage that it lands on. Add a little bit of convolution, we can use this as well. With the colorization here, we can choose any of these guys. These tend to be fairly short sounds but we can make them even shorter if we want to as you can see just a few milliseconds here let's turn this up and hope that it's not too loud now but as you can see here we can also do interesting stuff again we could use the note on random on this guy and then the note on random on this guy as well and again same setup there's going to be moments where it's going to get mixed in and moments where it doesn't. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have equal loudness. So I'm going to compress this. Of course, we're getting a little bit of loudness and we're also getting some low frequencies that we don't want. So we'll get something like this now. A final cool thing that I want to experiment with, because we have our modulations actually tied to pitch, as opposed to it being just random modulations like we used to have before, what will happen is that it will actually react to the pitch band here. So we can play around with the pitch band as this is playing and hopefully get some differences in texture as well. I was honestly expecting a little bit more out of that. If you want more, what we can always do is just tie a macro to all of the pitches in here as well, or even to just like the global pitch. I guess we can do that. Macro one, which is a macro we're not using, goes to global, I guess main tuning is what it's called now. It used to be called master tuning. And we're just gonna have this go up as well. And we're able to use this, say, for example, towards the end here to really add a nice like glide and maybe here have another one as well. And that way we have a little bit more stability in certain parts and then it just glides up nicely. So as you can hear, we're definitely getting some interesting nighttime sounds out of that. And hopefully this is a technique that you can apply in your own sound design as well. 
Of course, it doesn't have to be limited to just squelches having very slow oscillators that you're using for modulation, but are still tied to stuff like the pitch band and just your general like synthesis part, as opposed to actually being part of the modulators, can be very, very powerful in any sound design context. So let me know in the comments down below what you're going to do with it. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it and that you're subscribed as well. But that is going to be the end of the video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.